Coming up on this evening's Satellite Showtime, Space Track will tell you what's new. Mike Gustafson will tell you if this week's product review will be a good one. And you'll learn about a good variety of programming on Pat Porter's Insight Out. Stay tuned. Good evening. Welcome to Satellite Showtime. I'm Pat Olson. This program is brought to you by our corporate sponsors, Luxor North America, STV Magazine, and Caltronics Incorporated. On tonight's program, we will have another Space Track report. We'll tell you about next week's live show. That's right, Satellite Showtime is going live from Washington, D.C. next week. We'll tell you about that. And Pat Porter tonight will also step in with his Insight Out segment. Be sure to have a pen and paper ready this evening as we are going to be giving you quite a few addresses and phone numbers. Here's a start. Corporate Sponsors Month continues on Satellite Showtime. We know from your phone calls that you appreciate our program and we thank you for our calls. But our program would not be possible without the financial support of our corporate sponsors. Their numbers are on the screen and if you would, please give them a call and thank them for supporting our show. Those are our corporate sponsors, Luxor North America, STV Magazine, and Caltronics Incorporated. And I'm sure they wouldn't mind either if you happen to ask them about any products they have. For information on becoming a corporate sponsor of Satellite Showtime or a regular sponsor, here's an address and phone number. You can write to Nova Video Productions, Box 637, Highway 14 East, Richland Center, Wisconsin, 53581. And the phone number is 608-647-4246. We'll leave that number on the screen, also that address, for a few more seconds so you can jot it down. Hello, I'm Joe Kells, president of Nova Video Productions and the host of the Caltronics Video Newsletter. I'm breaking in on Pat at this particular time for a couple of important announcements. First of all, a new network. The new network for the satellite industry is uh, Paragon Corporation of Shelby, North Carolina. The Paragon Corpor is, Corporation is owned by a consortium of four home satellite TV industry executives, including Doug Brown, who is president of Triple D Publishing, his partner Chris Schulteis, editor and publisher of STV Magazine, Onsat, and Satellite Retailer, and industry pioneer Bob Cooper, Jr., editor of Coop Satellite Digest. The fourth owner is John Call, president of Caltronics, whom you've seen on this show a number of times. STVN will develop programming designed especially for more than one million homeowners and businesses who currently own satellite dishes. Engineering studies show that the new network should be on the air in early 1986, and satellite showtime will be an integral part of that new network. Second item I have to talk to you about today is a special two-hour Satellite Showtime program next week, direct from Washington, D.C. 
That's the two-hour show next week from Washington, D.C. It'll be a live show for your phone-ins from 10 to 12 Eastern, including those phone calls and a presentation on the history of scrambling, the players involved, and Space's policy on scrambling. That's a two-hour special. You'll also hear more about a special Earth Station Day production from Washington on the following Tuesday, which is October 29th. Satellite Showtime will also be taking a part in that live production from Washington on the 29th. In summary, special live shows from Washington, D.C. in the coming weeks. Be sure to be tuned in. The satellite industry is on the move. Robin Neidert from Brown and Finn will be on Satellite Earth Station Day, October 29th, and she'll be telling us more about that particular day right now. Good evening. I'm Robin Neidert from the law firm of Brown and Finn, and I'm here tonight to bring you a special message from space, the Satellite Television Industry Association in Washington, D.C. Space has organized what will be, without a doubt, the single most important event any member of the satellite television industry will attend this year. It's Satellite Earth Station Day, scheduled for October 29 here in the nation's capital. It will be this industry's opportunity to show Congress and the entire country what satellite television is all about. But before I go into the details of Satellite Earth Station Day, a little background on why you need to be here on October 29. In a few short months, CBS will scramble its signal. In a few short months, HBO will scramble its signal. The NCTA is putting together a consortium of cable operators to, dis to distribute scrambled signals, and it has made clear in no uncertain terms that the satellite television industry is not welcome to be a part of that consortium. ESPN, CNN, and other basic cable programmers are putting together their own scrambling plans and Viacom, which now owns VH1, Nickelodeon, Showtime, the movie channel, is developing its own scrambling plans. To date, there have been no assurances that once scrambling occurs, home satellite Earth Station viewers will receive scrambled programming in a fair and reasonable manner. In fact, if the preliminary actions of HBO and other cable programmers are any indication the home satellite viewer will be discriminated against once signals are scrambled. At this time, scrambling is the gravest threat that this industry faces. You know it, the cable industry knows it, space knows it, and consumers are starting to know it too. They are starting to fear scrambling. It is having a tremendously disruptive effect on the satellite earth station marketplace. That's why this industry went to Congress to ask for federal legislation that would ensure that home Earth Station viewers are treated in a fair and reasonable manner when scrambling occurs. There are currently three satellite Earth Station bills pending on Capitol Hill. H.R. 1769, which calls for a two-year moratorium on scrambling. H.R. 1840, which is the Satellite Television Viewing Rights Act of 1985, and S. 1618, which is the Satellite Television Viewing Rights Act of 1985 in the Senate. These bills will ensure that when signals are scrambled, the Earth Station users will have access to them on a fair and reasonable basis. These bills are this industry's lifeline to the future. But currently, only 10 percent of the U.S. representatives are co-sponsors of H.R. 1840 and H.R. 1769. And as for S. 1618, it has two co-sponsors, Senator Al Gore and Senator Thad Cochran. Those are the senators that introduced the legislation. That's two co-sponsors out of a possible 100. How do we get from two to 100? That's what Satellite Earth Station Day is all about. On October 29, space will host Satellite Earth Station Day here in the nation's capital. First of all, it's a celebration. It's been one year since President Reagan signed into law the Cable Communications Policy Act of 1984. That was the act that made it clear to U.S. consumers that it is legal to own and operate a home satellite earth station system. 
We will be in Washington to thank the legislators that gave this industry its birthright. But the second reason is even more important. Satellite Earth Station Day is an opportunity for every manufacturer, distributor, dealer, and even users of satellite Earth Station equipment to come to Washington and lobby their senators and their representatives on satellite viewing rights. It's our opportunity to show them what satellite television is all about. Manufacturers and distributors will have set up about 10 functioning Earth Station systems on the Capitol grounds. Dealers nationwide are asked to bring portable Earth Stations to Washington on the 29th. We are going to park the Earth Stations right on the Capitol Mall, the same place that the tractors were parked by the farmers when they came to Washington to tell Congress and the country about their plight. Our Earth Station display will do the same thing. Earth Stations will pack the mall in front of the Capitol, the same mall that almost every senator and every representative drives past on his or her way to work each morning. The visual impact of this Earth Station display will be tremendous. The day will begin with a rally on the mall. Representatives and senators will be there to address the industry representatives who have come to Washington. The rally will be followed by a press conference, and then all industry members will spread out to their individual senators and representatives' offices. Space and Brown and Finn will have made appointments for you with your legislators so that they will be expecting you. When you arrive, you'll escort your legislators to view the operating Earth Station displays that will be around the Capitol. Don't forget, many senators and representatives have never seen satellite television in action. This will be your opportunity to show them, to hand them a remote control. Let them watch that satellite Earth Station turn from satellite to satellite. Let them flip through the transponders and see the variety of programming. While they're experiencing satellite television, you will have an opportunity to talk to them about the public benefits this industry is providing and to ask their support on the satellite television viewing rights legislation. After the morning meetings, there will be a luncheon with guest speakers. After the luncheon, more meetings in the afternoon, followed by a photo session on the Capitol steps, and a wind-up of the day's events will occur in the evening. That's the agenda. But the most exciting part of Satellite Earth Station Day is that it will have complete morning to evening live coverage uplinked by space on Galaxy 3. All day long, the activities of this industry will be viewed live by Americans from coast to coast. National and local television and radio stations will be here in Washington to cover the, the event, as will national and local print media. Dealers will have an opportunity to be seen nationwide with their representatives and their senators, and they will have an opportunity to participate in a taping of a documentary of this event. Your customers back home will see you here in Washington doing something about the scrambling issue. The impact this industry can make by coming to Washington en masse and providing live coverage of its activities will be phenomenal. It will send a message to Congress, it will send a message to the cable industry, and it will send a message to the public that satellite television is here to stay. If you need information on Satellite Earth Station Day, call SPACE, area code 703-549-6990, or call us here at Brown and Finn, 202-887-0600. If you can't come to Washington, by all means, still, write your representatives and write your senators. Don't forget that constituent contact is the single most important element in a senator's or a representative's decision-making process. Satellite Earth Station Day is this industry's day in the sun. It's an opportunity to tell Congress what satellite television is all about, and it's an opportunity to tell the country what it's all about. It's a celebration, it's an event, and it's your future. This is Robin Neidert for Space, the Satellite Television Industry Association in Washington, D.C. See you on the 29th. Satellite Earth Station Day, two weeks from now, and Satellite Showtime's live program from Washington, D.C. will be one week from now. Remember, you can call in and talk to your industry leaders. 
Here are some other news items brought to you through the cooperation of STB Magazine. The USA Network plans to launch another feed tab for the Eastern and Central time zones. Testing for the feed will begin in January on Galaxy One. If that test feed is successful, USA Network will begin another feed for the West Coast with a three-hour time delay beginning in February. The new feeds would allow USA to show regional programming, including live coverage of sports events. The U.S. Justice Department is continuing its investigation of the cable industry in regard to its plans to scramble and market programming. The Justice Department says it has written to key cable programmers and association executives, asking them not to destroy any papers about scrambling and marketing efforts. The department is investigating to see if the efforts constitute illegal restraints of trade. The Justice Department will probably be keeping a close eye on this, too. The new plan by a group of programmers to scramble and market its signals. As you learned in our Space Track report two weeks ago, those pr programmers are Showtime, the Movie Channel, MTV, ESPN, and Turner Broadcasting. They have jointly announced the package of one or more of these services will be available as a paid subscription starting July 1st of next year. And they've chosen the Maycom Video Cipher 2 as their scrambling system. That news brought to you through the cooperation of STV Magazine. Coming right up on Satellite Showtime, a man from Oklahoma found working to solve his problem was better than fighting it. Stay tuned for that story next. The Star King Surveyor from Gilmax, the professional site survey instrument installers need. Takes just five minutes to set up, eliminates guesswork, and avoids installations that don't quite clear a tree or obstruction. With Star King, you can be sure before you start. Save time, money, and labor. Just $149 plus $6 shipping handling. Special pricing on six or more. Star King by Gilmax. Phone 205-837-4128 or 205-837-9088. The Luxor 9900 knows where all the satellites are. All about stereo hi-fi sound. All you need to know is what show you want to watch. Yes, Luxor has unified satellite, video, audio, and computer technology in a single integrated home satellite television system. So advanced, it's as easy to operate as an ordinary TV. Simple, clear, and color-coded. Up to 36 satellite locations can be programmed for instant recall. Every channel on every satellite is individually factory programmed prior to delivery. All audio and video information is ready for recall automatically. Five audio modes, factory programmed to individual transponders, deliver the right sound system automatically when a channel is selected. It's all yours with a Luxor 9900 the Intelligent Satellite System. Want to know more about satellite TV? Then go to the source for product reviews and how to. We're on the road and out in space and sometimes in very cold places with features and technical reports. It's all in Satellite TV. That's only $19.95 for 12 big issues of STV Magazine. Call now, 1-800-438-2020 and get this LCD calendar clock free with your subscription. That's 12 big issues of STV Magazine and the clock for only $19.95. The number again is 1-800-438-2020, 1-800-438-2020, call now. The Trans 10 by Caltronics, this eye-appealing transparent antenna has passed the stringent test of the McDonnell Douglas Corporation. It's approved for two degree spacing. In the words of McDonnell Douglas, the performance of the Trans 10 is equal to or greater than that of other antennas of similar size and construction. Not only does the Trans 10 perform, it's also covered by a five-year limited warranty, and it's easy to look at. 
Its baked acrylic thermoset black finish gives it a low luster appeal. Yes, the Trans 10 is also built for strength, its maximum reflector signal, and better retention of panels in high wind areas. Independent tests have indicated that the Trans 10 will withstand wind velocities up to 90 miles per hour. The Trans 10 by Caltronics, high in performance and strength, UPS shippable anywhere in the United States. An antenna for every season. Welcome back to Satellite Showtime. I'm Pat Olson. There's a gentleman in Sepulpa, Oklahoma, near Tulsa, who had a possible zoning problem on his hands, but decided to head it off at the pass. Lyndon Massa is a dealer in Sepulpa who learned his city was considering adopting a zoning ordinance to restrict the location of satellite dishes in people's yards. Massa enlisted the help of space, Brown and Finn, and two other dealers, and now the city of Sepulpa has a zoning ordinance that Massa calls super. He worked with the city on the ordinance and the other parties. The ordinance allows installations in the side yard, backyard, roof, or even in the front yard of a home if that's the only place available for the dish. Massa says he feels an ordinance like that won't hurt his TVRO sales at all. And he says the city commissioners showed they cared about the TVRO dealers and owners by working with them. Right now, SPACE is urging the FCC to pass a proposed rule that would preempt overly restrictive zoning ordinances. SPACE attorney Fred Finn talked about that in last week's Space Track report. So we're in the midst of that battle. We think that the FCC is going to make a decision. We think it'll be uh, positive sometime around the last week in November in time for uh, uh, all satellite earth station dealers to have uh, something uh, for Thanksgiving and something to be thankful about. Again, that proposed FCC rule would preempt local zoning ordinances that are judged overly restrictive. Tomorrow's the big day for Ray Couture of South Holland, Illinois. He'll go to trial to defend his owning a home satellite system, and the whole country is rallying behind him. Ray told his story to Keith LaMonica on the live nightly FM America program a couple of months ago. And tonight and tomorrow night, Keith will broadcast FM America from Ray's home area. Keith says it's a very important case, Ray's case, because many people could have situations similar to Ray's. Keith expects 1,000 people to gather in Ray Couture's defense. Two weeks ago in his last of six. Good evening and welcome. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the Drake ESR-424. And this particular receiver is the granddaddy of, of many, of a very, very old, good, reliable receiver. RL Drake Company produces this product, and they produce probably the nicest satellite receiver in the ESR-240 many years ago. The 240 lasted for a long time. It's still available. It's sort of the, the very first really consumer-grade receiver we had on the market. The ESR-424 is the block conversion replacement for it. Uh, it is high-tech, if you will. It has lots of neat features going about it. It is the 950 to 14 block IF, which has gotten to be pretty well standard in the industry these days. It's fully microprocessor controlled, digital tuning. It has a very nice remote control, which has um, all of the features you could uh, ask for on remote control. It, it has tunable audio. Uh, it is capable of operating both as a, a single receiver or dual receivers. That is to say, you can operate a dual block down conversion system with it as opposed to a single. Right now, I'm using it as a single down conversion system. But uh, it has a capability of running dual LNAs dual block down converters and has an internal switch that will switch between uh, channel uh, vertical polarizations and horizontal polarizations if you had an SMA TV system or just a very large house with a lot of receivers you uh, wish to use. Uh, the insides of the receiver have a few switchable items that allow you to select 
the kind of use you're going to put it into, so it's very versatile. Uh, it has one very nice feature that I like a lot, and that is that the final IF is 70 megahertz, and it loops that 70 megahertz out the back panel, which means that you can run the standard TI filters that are available on the market today if you should be operating in a high terrestrial interference environment. So let's take a look at the receiver for a second. Of course, a power switch, no magic there. A program button for uh, part of the uh, programming functions of the receiver. Format reversal on polarization. Polarity fine tune. And you may dim the uh, display. This is a uh, gas discharge or liquid crystal type of display. Shows you the information that you're on the TVRO system as opposed to the TV set. You can bounce between the TVRO and the TV set with that switch. It has the audio tune. And the light bar that you see in there tells you approximately what audio frequency you're on. A signal strength light bar. Then the channel that you're on, channel uh, 5 in this particular case. Okay, moving right along, we have the LED display. I'm sorry, the uh, infrared uh, control input that allows you the remote control to work. Audio selectable 6.2, 6.8 as a fixed function if you don't want to tune through all of them. Then you have the audio tune buttons that allows you to start tuning. And the way the tuning works on this is that once you start push the button and tell it to go, it will start to tune. And when it finds the next available audio channel, it stops and then and locks on it. And if you don't like it, you push it again, and etc. The one main button on the front panel is both the channel up-down and fine-tune control. All of this is repeated on the remote control. All of the functions in the what we'll call the light gray are for the power drive. There is a companion power drive that goes along with this. All of these buttons deal with the power drive. All the rest of the buttons are essentially duplicates of what's on the front panel of the Drake receiver. We can fine tune the video. We can select video channels, fine tune polarization, fine tune the audio change format, and of course we can turn it on, off and on. Okay, so let's uh, flip the receiver around, take a look on the back panel. Now this receiver has many, many, many different faces. It's capable of doing many things. So we have to first decide, uh, and the manual is very complete. It's probably one of the best manuals I've seen on the market. It goes into what you're supposed to do on the inside of the receiver. You take the lid off of it, decide your formats, your, your um, whether you're running dual LNBs, whether you want to run the 70 megahertz uh, uh, system. By the way, one little feature is that while this is a block system, it also has the capability of running a 70 megahertz single conversion system. Uh, it can do either or. I can't imagine why you'd want to do the single conversion, but uh, it has that capability. Right now, we are running on a single block system. The input is on, on uh, this point. We have a horizontal input if we were running a dual system, but it is single. We can run our TV set uh, and antenna into here, and we can select. And it has an internal switch for selecting between the TV set and the, uh, where it gets its signal. In other words, is it going to get off the VHF antenna, or is it going to come from the satellite receiver? And that's selected here. We have subcarrier output if we wanted to run a stereo decoder. We have video and audio outputs. This is the 70 megahertz loop through system. Right here, it's just literally just looped in and out across the back. Uh, disconnect this and things stop working, or at this point you'd put your TI filters if you had filter problems, or terrestrial interference problems. This terminal strip represents probably the one main complaint that I have with the product. The terminal strip is way too small. They use very miniature uh, screws for this strip, and it's very hard to get standard lugs. As you've seen, I've, for my polar order control, I've had to slip just one end of each lug underneath it to attach to it. I think it ought to be using the, what I'll call the standard size screw terminals. They're much bigger than this. But it has the connections for the power drive so that you have a combination power drive with one remote that works. Uh, these connections go to the power drive and, and uh, tell it what to do and when to do it. And the polar order control comes off of this, uh, these three right there. Okay, there is, because the receiver is microprocessor, I thought I would just go through a real simple procedure. On the bottom of the receiver, you can see this, there are many, many, many controls. Uh, we have uh, cable compensation, IF gain. This accounts for, since we're using 950 to 1450, these two controls are used to handle long cable lengths. Once again, uh, you wouldn't want to run RG59 over about 100 to 150 feet. Uh, 
using RG6, RG11 might uh, get you up to 300 feet and then there are a couple of controls here that allows you to handle that higher IF and long cable runs. You can adjust the video level, it's supposed to be one volt peak to peak, but let's say you needed something else or it was incorrect when you received it from the factory, you could adjust it here. Video inversion, uh, for whatever reason you want to invert the video, it's, the switch is here. Uh, it's, there is next an unclamp switch. You can actually disable the uh, clamping circuit internal to this receiver so that you could operate uh, the decoder systems that are coming on the market. So it is compo uh, decoder compatible at this point. We have uh, manual audio tune. Uh, we flip the switch and the audio system works a little bit differently. Scan on off, so it has scan features, very, very important. And skip tune versus normal. Skip tune versus normal is the uh, discussion about how you wish to tune the receiver. Do you want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the channels or do you want to go 1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8? To uh, save wear and tear on the polar rotor, we typically run it on skip tune, so we go odds and then evens. Okay, the last two buttons I've talked about are the calibrate and store buttons. Because this receiver utilizes a microprocessor, it does many things. And these are the little two little controls. Now, I'm not sure we'll be able to show this to you, but let's suppose I wanted to play around with the polarization. First I'd push the calibrate button. Now we got a flashing front panel. I would then uh, bump my polarization a little bit back and forth, get it to where I liked it, and then I would push the cal button. It turns off the receiver, stores the information into the uh, uh, appropriate circuitry, and then we can turn it back on again. Circuit comes up back on transponder one, and we're all ready to go. So we, we programmed it. And it took off and did its thing all by itself. So we can cycle through. Now let's take a look at how we can select channels. Let's get it back down. Also, if you had, before I go too much further, if we wanted to uh, fine tune the video on each channel, we could. We would push the cow button, it would blink. We would then go through each channel, one, three, five, seven, etc., fine tuning it, push the store button after every channel that would store that information, go on, we got done with all 24, we'd push it the, the cow button one more time, and in fact, all that information would be stored in memory. Uh, I found it to be, to work very well, and, and frankly, uh, it came out of the box, and I did not have to do any programming or messing with it, other than polarization. I did have to set polarization, of course. Okay, oops, I bumped the button, so let me turn it off, and there we go, so it's reset again. The channel selection, you see we're on transponder 1, the simple 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. And the way this works, when you get up to the high end, you get to 23. The next one would be transponder 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. And so conversely, coming back down again, 23, etc. Okay, Polar polarization fine tune for whatever reason, if we want to do it, is he available here. Audio tuning. We were talked about the audio tuning. If we punch the audio once, the audio takes off, and it starts seeking. Not sure you can see this, but the audio is now seeking. It's now found a new audio subcarrier. It's happy, but if I want to go back to 6.8, I punch it once, and it pops back to 6.8. So it is a very powerful little receiver with lots of neat features that I think uh, that you'll certainly enjoy. Some things that I found that were somewhat annoying in the receiver was that the polarization circuit tended to oscillate a little bit. Um, show this feature, it's, it's a uh, feature, it's not a feature actually, it's a little bit of a problem, but if we uh, select down to another channel, let's go to uh, even, and uh, we get some slight pulsing in the picture which is caused by the polar rotor circuit oscillating internal to it. Uh, the polarization circuit is working properly uh, as far as my feed system, but the receiver had minor little problem. I'm sure it's an adjustment that's internal to this receiver, not necessarily um, uh, indicative of the design. Also found that the audio was not quite as sharp as I liked it to be. Uh, I think the uh, IF passband was just a little too narrow, and we did have some uh, color dropout and some edge tearing. The uh, audio on the system worked very, very well. We're very pleased with the audio seek circuit. It would take off and find its own video, uh, its own audio circuit, so you could essentially scan each of the audio channels that you liked and listen to them. Very easy to, uh, to find that way. The rear terminal strip, as I mentioned, it was a little bit too small. I like to see it a little bit bigger. But it's a very nice little receiver, and I think with a little bit of additional time spent on it by the folks back at Drake, 
it'll take a, a, a good share of the market away from their 240, which is the old vulnerable uh, receiver that works so very well. Uh, it's a brand new product on the market, so some of these things take a little time to get squared away. So let's take a look at the actual bench data, see how it, uh, how it did there. On the uh, consumer data sheet, now this data sheet was set up for um, the purposes of, of sort of demystifying the, the technical side of, of how to test a receiver. And essentially we assign values of, of uh, the parameter underneath the words excellent, good, fair, and poor. So we'll just talk about for this discussion whether it was fair, good, excellent, etc. Once again, all these reviews are coming out in STV Magazine or Satellite Retailer, and uh, you can take a look at it in fine detail there. Okay, the video signal noise ratio was found to be fair, and that's primarily because of the slight tearing and the narrower IF bandwidth. Picture quality was good, wasn't excellent, it was good. Video frequency response was excellent, that meant the roll off was less than 1 dB, in which case it was. Video threshold was less than 8. Very good video threshold, but uh, it's because the IF bandwidth is very narrow. It got a poor on the IF bandwidth because it was less than 24 megahertz wide. I feel that you need to have an IF bandwidth of at least 26 to 27 for really good video. So this was a little narrow and it's probably why we had some uh, video problems. Audio distortion uh, was 1.6 to 2%, about fair at that point. Audio signal noise ratio tested good. Uh, not any real commentary there. The audio frequency response was found to be excellent. Uh, I had very good frequency response there. Audio, as I said before, was, was very, very good. Block frequency of 950 to 1450. Local oscillator leakage was fair. Image rejection wasn't tested. It uh, was so low, it didn't, couldn't even find it on the spectrum analyzer. Frequency stability was found to be fair, 4 to 6 megahertz. A little bit of drift, but not bad. Operating features. Well, in operating features, it did very good. It has a lot of operating features, good remote control, and they all work. A lot of receivers we get out there today have lots of operating features, but they don't work. This particular one, everything worked the way it was. It programmed very easily. The user manual. The user manual on this particular receiver is excellent. It's probably one of the best on the market today. Very, very clear explanations of how to do everything, how to program it, how to troubleshoot it, how to install it. Absolutely gem of a manual. Anybody should be able to put this system in. Installation was good. Uh, because of all of the features that it can do, you have to understand just a little bit more. Once again, using the manual, it takes you all the way through it step by step. So it shouldn't be a problem. But it wasn't as easy as, say, some other receivers which have slightly fewer features or less uh, ability to handle the many different uh, systems that are out there. But once again, good installation. And an overall score of fair of 71%. Good little receiver. Can't really um, uh, say too much uh, about it. Uh, in the bad realm. I've already discussed that. Let's talk about how we come up with some of these. Uh, one other product review, I talked a little bit about video signal noise ratio. Now this time let's talk about picture quality. How do I come up with, how did I decide that this receiver was a good as opposed to a fair or an excellent? Uh, there are two parts to the testing of any receiver. Uh, there is the subjective portion of it, and then there is the objective portion. The objective is the bench test with the test equipment. Everything is pretty much left to the computers and to the different pieces of te test equipment to give me the parameters or give me the test results, and I set the parameters. Some of this, though, is subjective. That is, I look at it and I decide if it was good, bad, or indifferent. In this particular case, I chose it as good primarily because of the uh, tearing and little minor problems that way. But essentially in that case, I'm looking at a color monitor, look at it and I just decide how the colors look. After testing 50 or 60 receivers, you get to the point where you can look at a receiver and determine whether or not it really truly is doing excellent, good, fair, or poor. Okay, I think uh, that covers picture quality. Next time we'll be talking about frequency response on the next uh, receiver we test. But uh, this is the Drake ESR-424. It has a companion drive, which makes it a complete system. We did not review that at this time. It has some very neat operating features with a 70 megahertz loop through, which I especially like. Very versatile receiver from that standpoint. And essentially, it's coming from a very excellent company. R.L. Drake Company has been around for many years, and I, I really believe that they've got a, a good engineering group and, and a manufacturing group, and the quality control will be up there. So. Uh, a new product for your consideration, and uh, based on my result, test results, I'd have to recommend it for your purchase. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.
If you have any comments or suggestions for Mike for his Tech Tip segment, you can write to him at Post Office Box 20700, San Jose, California, 95160. There's a satellite industry trade show going on right now in New Orleans. It's the 7th Annual Satellite Communications Users Conference. It started today and lasts through Thursday. Your contact for the show is Kathy Kreinher. Her number, 303-694-1522. More of Satellite Showtime right yeah. after the Caltronics video newsletter with Joe Kelch that's coming right up. Stay tuned. The Luxor 9900 knows where all the satellites are. All about stereo hi-fi sound. All you need to know is what show you want to watch. Yes, Luxor has unified satellite, video, audio, and computer technology in a single integrated home satellite television system. So advanced, it's as easy to operate as an ordinary TV. Simple, clear, and color-coded. Up to 36 satellite locations can be programmed for instant recall. Every channel on every satellite is individually factory programmed prior to delivery. All audio and video information is ready for recall automatically. Five audio modes, factory programmed to individual transponders, deliver the right sound system automatically when a channel is selected. It's all yours with the Luxor 9900, the intelligent satellite system. Here's a site survey instrument for professional installation. Star King Surveyor sets up in five minutes and takes the guesswork out of installations. Star King features pinpoint accuracy, highest quality, non-corrosive hardware, and durability. Star King saves time, money, and needless retrenching. Includes a handy vinyl carrying case and coordinates guides. Just $149 plus $6 shipping handling. Special pricing on six or more. Order now. Go Max. Hello, I'm Joe Kelch for Caltronics Video Newsletter. Good thing to have on hand tonight, a paper and pencil, because we're going to be bringing phone numbers to you of Caltronics products and, of course, other products as well. Here's, a, here's how to contact Caltronics. Simply call 800-826-CALL if you're out in the United States. That's 800-826-CALL, K-A-U-L. Here in Wisconsin, it's 800-826-NOVA, N-O-V-A. Everywhere else at 608-647-8902. John Call, president of Caltronics, has a message for all of us. Hey, thanks, Joe. Back again. I'd like to take just a minute to thank all you dealers uh, for your comments and calls during our segment of the programming. We uh, need your support, and we need the calls that you give us to help improve our product line, and we appreciate that. Keep Keep calling and writing the letters and uh, supporting uh, the show. I think it's very important, and we do appreciate it. Thanks again. Back to you, Joe. Thank you, John. Incidentally, John has been elected just recently as a member of the Board of Space as a manufacturer. So congratulations, John. Keep up the good work. Now here's Pat Porter speaking for Quick Pro. I'm here television. Drive covers with two there and another quick pro you get it in the ground. The phone 784 and area code 419-289-2228. Call today. 
There's a surge protector called Surge Free that we talked about last week. Good response. We'd like to have you hear more about Surge Free tonight. Element needs protect from lightning and high voltage surge. Surge Free being a PMI 5 volt, the Surge Free has maximum 4 volts. Most of us would walk a long way for a good cable. Well, here's a good cable from Caltronics. Here's the answer to your satellite cable needs. Caltronics Dual RG6, 1500 megahertz sweep tested, all in one satellite cable. Direct burial, sunlight resistant, and UL approved. Wraparound feature allows for easy entry through walls. Simply peel back wires for different electronic hookup. Meets any and all installation codes. This all in one satellite cable from Caltronics. Call for pricing. Quantity discounts available for immediate shipping. Phone 1-800-826-CALL, K-A-U-L. Or in Wisconsin, call 1-800-826-NOVA, N-O-V-A. You know, we've spoken in the past about the great Caltronics family, the stainless steel, and now the Trans series. That includes the Trans 10, the Trans 10X, the 12 rib design, the Trans 8, and the Trans 6. Just this past weekend, we were out getting some good shots of the Trans 8. The spectacular fall background here, portion of the state, it's just out of this world. Uh, people come from many states to see this display, so you can see for yourself how great it is. We spoke just a moment ago about the Trans 10X, the 12 rib design. Here's more on that particular series, Trans 10X. The Trans 10 12 rib design by Caltronics. This beautifully designed and crafted transparent antenna is setting the industry on its ear. With the latest in antenna technology, the Trans 10 12 rib has strength, accuracy, and beauty at a price you won't believe until you experience the quality and savings yourself. Baked acrylic, Thermoset black finish, super strength rib, hub, and rim. Caltronics means quality, and the Trans 10 12 rib lives up to the Caltronic tradition. Finally, here's the information on the Trans 10, the granddaddy of the Trans series, just a year old and a granddaddy already. The Trans 10 by Caltronic performance and strength all at a highly competitive price. Engineered for maximum durability and reflective surface, also extremely easy to look at. Baked acrylic, thermoset black finish, low luster appeal. A parabolically formed hub, prime steel at 14 and a half inches in diameter. Ribs of superior strength tubular 16 gauge steel encased in polytrans vinyl. Full half unobstructed mesh retaining channels. Maximum reflective signal and better retention of panels in high wind areas. UPS shippable anywhere in this country. The Trans 10 by Caltronics. High performance and strength. Tested and approved to withstand wind velocities up to 90 miles an hour and approved for two degree spacing by the McDonnell Douglas Corporation. Yes, the Trans 10 with a limited five-year warranty is your best buy of all mesh antennas on the market. The Trans 10, the antenna for every season. One more reminder about those phone numbers. We're here to serve you, and you call us, and we'll serve you. The number is again 800-826-CALL for those of you in the United States, K-A-U-L. For those of you in Wisconsin, it's 800-826-NOVA, N-O-V-A. And for everywhere else, it's 608-647-8902. Thank you so much for viewing us tonight. See you same time, same station next week. In our Inside Out segment this week, our resident Texan, Pat Porter, tells the variety of programming you can receive with your home satellite system. Pat? Thank you, Pat, and thank you folks for joining us with this segment of Nova Video Productions, Inside Out, with Pat Porter. I'm Pat Porter, Skeet and Leela's boy from Big Spring, Texas. I'm the marketing manager for Starcom Distributing. Starcom Distributing has offices in Big Spring, Texas, 
Jefferson City, Missouri, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Also have Texas offices in the Dallas area, Houston, San Antonio, and have just recently opened in Mission, Texas. You know, we're in the most exciting industry that has ever been available to man. Uh, it's rather like Victor Hugo said, there is something stronger than all the armies in the world, an idea whose time has come. And I think that the time has come for home satellite television. Home satellite television. What a, what a potpourri of, of things that, that you can watch. It's endless. Sports, information, weather, news, entertainment, movies. It's an idea who has just started because we're just into the entertainment segment of this. However, very, very soon we'll be into the education and communication. But you know, one of the things that scares me, enthusiasm without knowledge is like running in the dark. And we don't want to run in the dark. We want to know what's up there. There are lots of things up there that we're not aware of. Do you remember when, and way back when, you had a CB radio? All those radio waves and all those conversations were there all the time. You just didn't have a way to tune in and pick them up. Many, many of you have scanners. And look at all the world of, of, uh, of information that's out there on those frequencies that we don't uh, generally hear. Makes me kind of scared to walk around outside uh, without a hat on, you know, all those microwaves hitting the earth. Of course, I'm only kidding. I've had people ask me if it would dish would cure arthritis or if it would uh, harm their cat. Certainly not. Those microwaves strike that dish 128 quintillionth the power that they originally left the earth. All that dish does is reflect that microwave energy up into a, an amplifier that then converts it to TV signal that we can use on our home television set. The receiver merely selects those channels. I said that because we all know about the pictures on TV, but did you know that there are a lot of audio-only subcarriers? Now, subcarriers come off of the side of the bandwidth that's unused for video transmission. The uh, bandwidth is 36 megahertz doesn't mean anything to us non-technical types like myself, but there's 36 megahertz coming down, and most receiver bandwidths are between 24 and 26 megahertz. So that leaves about 10 or 8 or 10 or 12 megahertz on each side, and some guys have figured out how to send audio transmission on those subcarriers. There are a lot of them up there. One of the easy ways to find those is to get a copy of ONSAT. ONSAT is America's home guide to satellite television. This is a special fall preview issue. Uh, and over here on page uh, 42, right after the expanded satellite uh, viewing guide, right here it says audio services. This is in very small print and Perry, I don't even know if you can zoom in on that. It's hard to read even from here. I can read as well as I ever could. However, now I have to hold it in a real strong light and hold it really still. I know what you're like. But anyway, here's a... Uh, well, you just have to get one of these and read it. But there's 50s music, there's uh, rock and roll, there's country and western, there's contemporary. There's even a service up there that reads books. Uh, for the blind, or, hear, or eye, uh, seeing impaired people. And then it tells that they're on 24 hours or 6 hours or whatever. But what a wonderful world is available up there. If you'd like more information on audio subcarriers, <clears throat> write Inside Out. Just write to me, Pat Porter, Inside Out, care of Nova Video Productions, Box 637, Highway 14 East, Richland Center, Wisconsin, and that zip is 53581. I'll repeat that number later on in the program. Anyone to get full value out of their television needs to have a viewing guide to see what's on, what's new, what's coming. The, as I discussed in an earlier segment of Insight, your receiver needs to be compatible so that you can get full value 
from these audio subcarriers because many of them are in stereo. There are stereo capable receivers on the market today. And if yours isn't, you need to make yourself acquainted with your dealer and ask him what it would cost to either adapt your receiver to stereo or to trade up and get a stereo adaptable receiver. Less than 5% of the receivers, stereo capable receivers that have been sold, are hooked up to a stereo amplifier system because it needs that to get the full measure uh, of the crystal clear audio that comes down from satellite. For more information on this exciting concept of home satellite television, write to me, Pat Porter, Inside Out, care of Nova Video Productions, Highway 14 East, Box 637, Richland Center, Wisconsin, and that zip is 53581. I have a wonderful memory, it's just short. I can remember nearly as well as I ever could, which means I can't remember very much. <clears throat> it's really been my pleasure to be with you this evening, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you again on our next segment of Inside Out with Pat Porter. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. That's all for this evening's Satellite Showtime, brought to you by our corporate sponsors, including Luxor North America, STV Magazine, and Coltronics Incorporated. Next week, join us live in Washington, D.C. You can call in and talk to your industry leaders from space. That's next week's program on Satellite Showtime, live from Washington, D.C. SATCOM 4, Transponder 22. Be sure to tell all your friends about it so they'll have a chance to call in too and ask any question you like about our industry. Tonight and every night, you can tune in to another show about the home satellite industry, FM America on Telstar 303, Transponder 18. Tonight, host Keith LaMonica was planning to broadcast his show from near Chicago. You'll find out about that if you tune into his show right after ours. And on Thursday nights, there's another show. Don't forget, forget to catch Boresight at 9 Eastern, SATCOM 4, Transponder 20. See you next week, live from Washington, D.C. Good night.